Hi, it's Sandy Wiley. Today I want to talk about change. Well, change in other people. We know everything evolves and everyone changes. But what happens when the person that you cared about, that you loved, all of a sudden isn't that same person anymore? And no matter how many times you try to talk about it with them, they can't see it. Now, this is, I think, what happens in relationships, why a lot of relationships end up breaking up. Because one of the people in the relationship changes. In the beginning, when you meet someone, you just focus on all the similarities that you ha that the two of you have, whether it's with a romantic partner or just solely a platonic friendship. You focus on the similarities, and you don't pay too much attention to the differences. In, even if it's true that you both have similarities and are both a, a lot alike in the beginning, there's that word change again. People change. So... You might be very, you know, um, very much compat compatible in the beginning of a relationship and have like a lot in common. But what can happen is then one of you changes and the other one doesn't or doesn't grow with the person who's changing or doesn't grow along the person who changes. A lot of times that impacts a relationship because the other person um, expects that person to be the person who they met. This happened in a relationship um, with one of my former yoga teachers. Uh, she was a yoga teacher and her husband was a yoga teacher and they used to travel the world um, teaching yoga. And then all of a sudden she changed career paths and she wanted to be an actress and go to New York and take up acting. And he couldn't understand that and he didn't support that because he couldn't understand that they had this great thing going. They both loved yoga. They both were yoga teachers and they taught around the world. They traveled the globe, you know, Spain, Aruba, Fiji. They traveled the globe. And she wanted to go off to New York and take up, you know, do a complete turnaround and take up acting. And he really didn't, um, he didn't want that. So it was a lot more complicated than that. He was also not the person she thought he was. How often does that happen? She was not, he was not the person that she married. He became very, very different after their marriage and you got to watch out for that too uh, my husband's dentist he told me this she thought she met a wonderful man and, um, and they got married but as soon as they got married he quit his job and he expected her you know to support him well he did nothing you know because she was a dentist and dentists make very very big money that's what people tell me <laughs> Um, but how was she to know that as soon as they got married, he was going to quit his job and live off of her? She had no reason to believe that. Maybe he had a good job when they met, you know? Um, so you, this is what happens in relationships. Say, take two best friends, okay? Well, my best friend, Holly, we were both married. We both had special needs children. We both had, we were like, we had everything in common. Then she divorced and she started dating one guy after another guy after another guy, having one night stands and everything. And then we had nothing in common, absolutely nothing. Um, our kids used to be friends and then our kids went off to college, no longer really kids, right? So we didn't even have that in common. Um, so then the relationship slowly died. And this happens a lot. It doesn't happen to all relationships, but it's, a very, but it's very common when someone changes 
that it changes the relationship and often the relationship cannot handle the change or the person who changes the other person can't handle the change in that person because if you met someone and you were attracted to that person because they were a certain way it could even be physical not just career changes or stuff like that say you met this um this guy and he was really good built had a six pack had muscles and then you got married and he gained like 60 pounds um he didn't exercise anymore he had this big fat pot belly and he just sat on the couch and drank beer and watched sports before it wasn't like that um when when you were dating he was trim and he used to do a lot of physical activities together um, say you went skiing, you went um, mountain climbing, you just enjoyed the outdoors and nature. And then all of a sudden, once you got married, he gained all this weight and was a couch potato, essentially. See, that wasn't the person that you, you know, that you married. This happens all the time. How many times? I've seen this. It's usually with the woman, though. I just brought up the man. That a guy will marry a woman... And she'll be like a, you know, really, really thin. And she'll have long, long hair. Then, after a year of marriage, she'll cut her hair like a boy. I mean, boy short. Like, I'm not talking about, you know, chin length, bob, cute. I'm talking about like nothing. Like, like a, a, a guy, you know, not even, guys have longer hair. And gain like 50 pounds and just, you know, not bother putting, you know, trying to look pretty. Try, or just wear baggy sweats. And it's like, gee, I used to, when we were dating, my wife was like a fashion model. She always dressed really nice. She had gorgeous long hair. Then after we married, she let herself go to sea. I mean, this happens so many times in relationships. It's not, it can be the physical. It can be a career change. It can be um, suddenly the person doesn't show any respect to you where they were very you know in the beginning of a relationship you can't judge how that person is going to be you know in five years in 10 years in 20 years I mean I met my husband when I was 18 years old I, I was 18 years old I'm 58 that's 40 years ago am I the same person I was I was a virgin at 18 a virgin um, I never, I never did anything. I never, uh, I was extremely shy. Um, I was totally opposite, you know, of what I am now. If you saw me then, you know, if you knew me then, you would say, oh my God, you know, like you would be like blown away, <laughs> blown away at, you know, but my husband loved me enough to stay with me through all my changes and adapt to those changes. Um, so my husband really hasn't, he's changed physically. Uh, he doesn't look anything like he did when we got married. Absolutely nothing. Um, but, and he's grown more like, um, in, more impatient and more quick tempered. When I met him, he was like very calm. That's what living with me will do to you. Very patient. Um, ooh, the big B over here. <laughs> so he's changed a little bit too, but not as drastically as I have changed. And I guess if you really love someone, you will weather the changes with them. But a lot of times in relationships, um, people really can't handle the changes. And that is what happens um, the relationship dissolves because it's not the same relationship that it was built on. Um, the person is not the same person that they were. And the relationship is not the same relationship that, that it was. And like I said, this happens with friends. It can happen with your adult children. Um, it can ha it happens with your lovers, with your spouse, with your parents. It can happen with your siblings. You grew up best friends with your sister. Um, you and her have a lot in common. 
and you you always because you lived together she was your best friend and you did everything together and then she gets married and has children and you stay single and she's not she can't always drop everything and do the fun things now she has other priorities you know she um she has children and she you know has a spouse and you know she has other priorities so it's very hard she's not the same person she was when she was your sister living at home and sometimes people can weather that change and grow closer and adapt to it and other times they just don't adapt um, because they're not as close anymore because the person has, like I said, different priorities, um, doesn't prior, you know, doesn't make time for them. It's kind of hard nowadays because people are juggling so much. They have careers that take up a big chunk of their time. They have families that take another big chunk of their time. They might have, um, like, hobbies that take a big chunk of their time. And so they really don't have a lot of free time you know, to spread around. So that can be difficult. But change is inevitable. It, it is inevitable and everyone changes. We're, we're not the same. Look at yourself. I mean, if you're older, maybe if you're very young, you haven't changed significantly if you're only in your 20s. But if you get, when you get older, you will notice a change, you know, you will notice that, you know, you're not the same person as you used to be and that can be um, that can be very difficult on your relationships especially your former relation your old your old relationships because your new relationships when you meet someone new they only know you as the you now the you that you that, that you're presenting to them now today they don't know you as a you that you were in the past you see, so that's why a lot of people, um, they go through so many friendships because the people in the past, um, you know, they kind of like outgrow. I'm not the same person. My son outgrew some friends like that too. My son, um, you know, he's studying to be a doctor and his old friend, you know, he's in his 20s and he still wants to play video games. And, you know, he has a part-time part -time job washing dishes. It's like they used to have a lot in common. They used to do martial arts together. Um, you know, when my son was young, he loved video games too. But my son matured much faster, you know. So now my son is matured and for, you know, and he's more like a 30-year-old while his friend who's in his 20s, the same age, he acts like a 14-year-old, you know. So it doesn't work out anymore because, you know, my son outgrew him, see. That happens. I mean, it was good when they were younger and they were kids and they liked to play video games, right? But now my son is, you know, he's going for his master's, going for his doctorate. And, you know, he's studying all the time. He works a full-time job on a, a crisis hotline. He doesn't have time to, you know, sit back and do video games or, you know, like that. He He's thinking about his, his future. So... See, they kind of went like a fork in the road. They, they went their own separate ways. And this happens in friendships. You know, a lot. It, it, it happens a great deal in friendships. I mean, it happens all the time in friendships. Not just romantic relationships now, um, but in friendships too. I'm sure that it's happened in your friendships, um, that your friends, like for instance, in high school, I had, these uh, I had this friend Maria. She's Italian like me. She was extremely shy and very insecure. Um, she was, you know, overweight. And, you know, she just, you know, she really didn't say anything. Uh, we were good friends, though. But then later on, she lost a lot of weight and she started dating. And she kind of outgrew me because, um, you know, she really didn't want to be friends with me anymore. Um, she was the one who outgrew me. She started, you know, going out and driving, and she bought her own car. I didn't have my own car. Um, when she bought her own car and she lost weight, and then it was ironic, be um, because I was going through infertility then. Um, 
I gained a lot of weight. So now I'm like much heavier than she was. When we were friends, she was much heavier than I was. But then she lost all the weight while I gained all the weight. And I kind of like went into a shell. Um, I was very shy while she was outgoing and bubbly and dating and driving and working and doing all these things. So yeah, so she kind of outgrew me. It happens. It's just ironic, you know, how it just like turned around, turned around like that. And oftentimes it's very hard to bridge that gap, you know, it's very hard. I mean, we tried, you, you can do that, but um, you can try to connect to your older friends. I did that with a few of my friends after I got married and had kids, you know, I did that with Maria. I did that with Julia and um, it never worked out. It never worked out because we were both different people, you know, and the different people that we were coming together uh, just didn't really, um, it didn't click, you know what I mean? It wasn't like there was any hard feelings or we had a fight or anything. It was just like, I'm different, they're different now. We're meeting them today as like two strangers. It was really like, me, you know, two strangers and we just didn't have anything in common. But really good relationships um, can weather that. Really good relationships can click and, um, you know, when they meet each other after years and not speaking can, can you know, rekindle that old friendship that, and, and, and get right back to the same place. You know, it's like, oh, Jesus, I haven't talked to you in years, but it just seems like yesterday. Have you ever heard anyone say that? That can happen. Um, if you have a really strong bond, like, you know, me and my husband, I think that my husband has a very strong, strong bond. So no matter all the changes that I've been through, and he has a very deep love for me, that, you know, he's here till the end, you know? Some people are just like that. It doesn't matter the changes in the person. They're going to be there to the end. Think of if someone gets sick, right? Like, look at my son. He was struck down with um, pneumococcal meningitis, and he lost, you know, severe permanent brain damage. And now he's always going to be two years old. No matter how old he grows up to be, mentally he'll always be two. So we had to adapt to that. We have a two-year-old. It's like I'm a grandmother. Like people my age are grandparents, right? And, you know, well, I'm kind of like a grandparent to my son. He's 28, but really he's like two. You know, I, I buy him toys like a two-year-old. Uh, I buy he Melissa and Doug puzzles for four-year-olds. Uh, Thomas the Train, um, Sesame Street books, um, animal figures, um, stuffed animals. All of, he watches Barney. He's just like a two-year-old, right? So I had to get used to, you know, um, being with my son on his level of being like two. Instead of, you know, he's 28, but he really is like two. So... And also it happens too if someone is what if someone had a stroke, you know, and isn't the same person. They, they're in a wheelchair. They can't, um, they can't communicate like they used to. Um, you, can't have, you don't have a sexual relationship anymore. You're more in the caretaker role as you're, uh, toward them. Instead of an equal partner, you're more in the caretaker role. That happens a lot with married people, right? It happens, and then, you know, instead of an equal partner, you're their caretaker. And that, that changes the dynamics of the relationship completely when you turn into your partner's caretaker. You know, your, your children are married. Now this is the time for you and your partner to travel. And then all of a sudden they have a severe stroke, and they're debilitated, and they, they're in a wheelchair. They can't talk, and they can't, you know... They really need, you know, all your time and your care. So it's a totally different experience. And some relationships can weather that. And other relationships don't weather that. They end up, you know, splitting because it wasn't what they signed up for. Hey, in life, you know, it's never what you sign up for, okay? Life doesn't work like that, you know. It's not what you signed up for a lot of times. Like the people will say, I didn't sign up for this. Well, that life changes. It changes all the time, you know?
one thing is constant, that life is inconsistent. It's always going to be changing and either you have to adapt or adapt or perish. <laughs> That's what they say. So enough of that for changes. Um, let me know in the comments if you've had any experiences where your relationships have changed and what happened. Did you weather those changes out or did you end, end up going your separate ways? Okay, take care.